The banner reads, Prosperity, Housing, Welfare. Like many young activists the world over, Zdenik Stefik and Karen Mrazik are striving to make their country a better place. The two young men are communists in the Czech Republic, a country renowned for its fight against communism. It's been more than a decade since the end of Soviet domination, but for some radicals, the cause lives on. Základní důvod, proč jsem u komunistů, je to, že současný svět nevidím jako alternativu. The main reason I am a communist is that I don't find the world today and society today as a viable alternative. And that's why I'm trying hard to change it. I think that communists are one of those progressive forces who have it in their program. Outside Prague, in the city of Brno, Miroslav Ransdorf, a Communist Party member of parliament, is rallying support for the party that once oppressed the nation. The candidate is encouraging his supporters to vote on June the 14th, when 200 deputies will be elected to Parliament. He says the Communist Party is the only hope for solving the country's housing and crime problems. He says capitalism has failed the people. A return to socialist values promises prosperity, housing and welfare for young and old. It's a message that appeals to many who say their lives have not improved since the communist regime collapsed in 1989. Where once there were jobs for all, now unemployment is running at nearly 9%. The next problem is security in our streets, in our homes and so on. Another very important problem is the problem with flats. In 12 years, fewer flats have been built than the average for six years before November 1989. That means that around 1,000 flats should have been built but have that is a very important problem. The communists are appealing to the disaffected. It is basically the only large communist party in uh, Eastern Europe um, where, uh, which has not reformed itself and, uh, and is still calling itself communist and in many ways is, is still communist. The country is due to become a full member of the European Union by the middle of 2004. Pehe says communism is obsolete in today's Czech Republic. It doesn't have a bright future because it doesn't really offer any uh, real solutions. It offers only a, a protest. It is a typical, at this point, it is a typical protest party which says uh, that it doesn't like globalization, doesn't like uh, uh, open international trade, it doesn't like European integration, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't like our neighbors very much. Uh, and uh, it doesn't like uh, uh, a market economy. The strong economy has made the Czech Republic more affluent than its Eastern European neighbors. Foreign investors have injected capital and bought international brands. Unlike some neighbors, the Czech government hasn't purged its communist past, and with 130,000 grassroots members, it's the only communist party in Europe that's growing. Wenceslas Square, at the heart of two dramatic events that have changed the course of history. The brutal side of communism. The Soviet Union ended Czechoslovakia's attempts at reforms and further chilled the Cold War. Overnight, half a million troops from the armies of five Warsaw Pact countries invaded. The stomping of the 1968 Prague Spring ended any move towards liberalization. The effects of the occupation lasted more than 20 years until the Velvet Revolution. The bloodless mass resistance toppled the hardline communist regime in 1989, bringing an abrupt end to two generations of repression. People welcomed an end to travel restrictions as state security apparatus stifled opinions and official eavesdropping. Four years later, playwright and leading dissident Václav Havel became the country's first post-communist president. Havel's policy has been to let communist era bygones be bygones, although some Czechs have called for an honest assessment of the past. Prague's old town square has become a destination de rigueur for tourists from around the world. The capital is thriving, but outside the city, where there are no euros and dollars changing hands, there are pockets of high unemployment, ideal ground for communist gains. In a bizarre twist, 
The latest capitalist venture owned by an American businessman is the Museum of Communism. Monuments to an outdated era of hammers and sickles and the cult of the worker. The peasants united for the common good, each working for all, a utopian blueprint that couldn't support the test of reality. Outside, a stark reminder of the human cost, two young men, Jan Palak and Jan Zajic, burnt themselves to death as a protest against the Soviet occupation. Lenin has a new following here. Around the country, 3,000 young people belong to the Communist Youth Party. They're looking not to Western Europe for their future, but to a socialist revolution. <laughs> že vlastně ten západní svět, jak se říká, tak funguje na několik takových jo, funguje na tom, že zvyšuje přímé daně, teda zvyšuje nepřímé daně a snižuje přímé daně. To znamená, že bohatí platí méně a ti chudí platí více, protože jich je víc, že jo. The communists want the Czech Republic out of NATO and oppose integration with Western Europe, seen as a capitalist citizen. 